um, Glow Baby. Uh, I do facials, waxing, glam, brow tints. This is Vanessa. I'm styled by Vanna underscore. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Vanessa. I do eyelashes. I do eyelash lift. And that's practically all I do. It's all my services. And I'll put her Instagram down below too so you guys can check her out. And then, so we're just going to go through some things because we've been writing down questions. I feel like she wrote down some really good ones. I'm more, like, vague. <laughs> but we're going to go through them. I might have a part two if it's too long because I don't want them to be too long either, like, more than an hour. What made you choose the beauty industry? Bro, this is a long one for me. I feel like I've been through waves of the beauty industry before I actually went to school. I ended up going to school for eyebrows, like microblading. I thought that's what I wanted to do at first because I really do like doing brows. But now that I have my own studio and I'm just like all the licensing and everything, I'm just like, I don't know if that's really what I want to do. And then... So I did that, I forgot what year because I'm really bad with my timing. So I'm not even gonna say specific years because I will say the wrong year. <laughs> then after that, I did body sculpting. I did body sculpting um, and then that's when I kind of started like looking more into like what other stuff can I do in the beauty industry? And then that's when I found out about estheticians. So I decided to go to school to be an esthetician. So that was like, a little bit after COVID. But what about you? Um, just growing up, I have my Hispanic family doesn't know how to do. No, I shouldn't even say that. <laughs> <laughs> when you're the when you're the MUA of the family, <laughs> <laughs> literally. Growing up, I was always like doing my family's makeup and hair every time we had a party or something. So I ended up like growing up with that. I ended up loving it. I remember stealing my sister's makeup. My sister was older than me. Mm -hmm. So I remember stealing her makeup. I was in elementary wearing freaking black eyeliner all over. Oh I look like a fucking raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> like I would do my makeup in freaking mm -hmm. elementary. And just, I don't know. It's just it's something I've always wanted since I was little. Yeah. I wanted to do makeup. I ended up going to school for well, me wanting to learn how to do makeup. But the school I went to didn't really teach you a lot about makeup. They only taught you like the basic the day and night. And that's it. Oh, and like disinfecting and stuff like that. Yeah. But they didn't really teach you much. They taught you more about hair. So, I don't know. I just... Do you feel like your school was like... It taught us a lot? Kind of like, do you... Would you recommend your school to other people, I guess? I think I would. My school. So you liked it? Yeah. yeah. They were very strict, but it taught me how to be responsible. And it taught me like... Yeah, just to be responsible. Um, that school, if you don't have certain stuff, like, they'll kick you out. Oh, really? Yeah, like so it's what? like a morning shift and then an afternoon shift. Um, so, <clears throat> like, for instance, I got kicked out. I got sent home just because I forgot a mannequin. And their reason was your client doesn't sometimes comes in asking for a haircut. Last minute, they're like, oh, I don't want a haircut. I just want a hair dye. So it teaches you that you're always yeah. supposed to be prepared for yeah. everything. So I would recommend my school because they taught me how to be responsible and how to look ahead. Yeah, I guess that's pretty cool. Um, what school did you go to then? I went to RCC. Group. Okay. Um, so for me, I didn't have such a good experience at school. <laughs> so that's why I don't even say the school that I went to because, I mean... It's not bad if you're just trying to go in and there get your license, but like don't expect anything I would say <laughs> because I would just go. I found like my SD besties and like we kind of helped each other get through the schooling because I felt like the schooling was in it and it's not my teacher or anything because my teacher always tried to do the best. To help us so I really did like my teachers 
but the school wise it was just like grimy and girls are grimy and yeah so I gotta say if you're gonna go to school I recommend um looking into it for me it took me a year yeah because um we'll say what you what I went to school for cosmetology it took me a whole year there was two decisions you could do morning which is eight hours and then or night that is I think it's five hours honestly mm -hmm. but I did a morning um and that was the best decision. I finished fast in a year. The teachers were amazing. I still mm -hmm. have, I still keep in touch with like three teachers. And I love those teachers. So you had like a lot of teachers? Yeah. No, for me, everybody kept quitting because they were like, <laughs> <laughs> I think that says a lot about the school. It does. But hers was a little bit longer because she did go to school for hair, so. And they teach you everything. They teach you, cosmetology <laughs> teaches you facials, hair. Mm -hmm. women's hair so like haircuts hair dye bleaching they teach you men's haircut uh, manicure pedicure acrylics mm -hmm. did they go into depth mm -hmm. yeah they teach you like the basic like like, not, like how long would you say that you think you spent on facials maybe like hmm, they go by like semesters um so Mm, like months. every the whole year we're going through the facials and like through going through the subject but it's like the first semester is like the very basic and then the second and then towards like the last three semesters it's that's when we're taking clients yeah and then well we work with whatever we know but they teach us like the very basic they don't teach us like so much because um, at our school, like, the cosmetologists would be there to the nighttime ones. Mm -hmm. And then they went over facials, like, super quick. Like, they even came with us so we can teach them. Mm -hmm. And I know for cosmetology, say, like, if I'm a cosmetologist, so if I want to be, learn a little bit more facials, I would go to SD school. And it's just a shorter time. So, say, like, you took nine months. For me, it's going to be a little shorter since I learned already basically. some stuff, on, like, the basic stuff of it. Hmm. What do you think you would be doing if you weren't in the beauty industry? You know what? I've always wanted to be a nurse. So you think you would have taken the nurse route? The nurse route. Something in the nurse. Maybe like, I've always wanted to do like ultrasound technician. They get paid good, no? I think so. I like babies. I like pregnant girls. I like teaching the babies. <laughs> For me, um... I mean, I did I did go to college, and I did my two years. Ended up being three, because crippled. I went to school, I got my AA, and when I was going to school, I was kind of going for psychology, so I feel like maybe I would have gone that route. But when I was doing all that, I was just like, man, I feel like everybody does, or everybody wants to do psychology. So I think that's when I took a couple months off, and then that's when I found esthetician school. Why did you decide to start your own business? A lot of things people don't tell you before you start your own business. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, I mean, I watch so many YouTube videos. I follow so many <laughs> entrepreneurs in the beauty industry. And everybody says the same thing. There's no handbook. I'm just figuring it out as I'm going. And it's nice having friends. That, that support and understand, understand one another. Yeah, because nobody understands. Nobody and it's a it's, struggle yeah sometimes i just want to cry it's a big struggle you have to go through all the licenses you need you gotta supplies is a lot being able to make enough money for rent insurance even just starting off when you have like no clients mm -hmm. um, because i really like the beauty industry i really like making people feel like oh my god like you know how carol g says oh my god this is so amazing <laughs> <laughs> like making them feel confident and making them feel beautiful because i mean there's so many things that i mean personally myself that make me not feel beautiful even though i am sometimes you know not that i'm some beautiful sometimes i meant like that i don't feel beautiful sometimes but stuff like that. You know? I like having control. 
I, I would say because for a while I worked at a spa for like six months before I worked at the beauty store and I guess this is a main reason um, I really just wanted to build my portfolio and like show my work and my manager there wouldn't let me show my work like I couldn't take pictures of clients or anything and I feel like for me at least in our day and age like showing our work is very important to mm -hmm. us Yes. you know like how are you supposed to show that you know what you're doing and like just show off your work you know because you're proud of your work at the end of the day so i feel like that was a big thing for me and how is that business going like compared to what i started i mean it's hard starting off it's hard building clientele um this is the stuff that like nobody shows nobody shows the struggles on People only show the glamorous, like the IG reels and whatever. And you know what? I do too, but I want to be able to show more of my struggles as well. And this is why I wanted to do, I think we're going to call it glow talks. But So for me, after figuring out that I wanted to do beauty, I always wanted to, even before then, I actually wanted to like be a businesswoman. So from <clears throat> ultrasound, I was always like debating ultrasound, beauty, and business owner. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to be a business <clears throat> owner. So once I got to a beauty industry, I was like, oh, I want my own salon. I want my own. I want to be able to run it and not, how do I explain it? Like be able to work, but not having to like be there every day, you know, have my girls work either booth rent I was thinking more booth rent than commission but mm -hmm. booth rent have them to deal with their own stuff me with my own stuff work whenever I want however I want so that's how that's how I see my future that's yeah. how I and so I've always wanted to own a business own beauty I think that would be really cool how do you see your business in five years having yeah. my own salons not just one <laughs> many <laughs> many that, growing I want to grow um obviously right now I'm still a beginner as a business owner it's what it's been two years yeah but um in those two years I've learned a lot it's been a freaking roller coaster from when I first started to yeah. now it's crazy it's a journey yeah it's crazy but um that's how I see myself in five years what about you I don't know like I feel myself going in so many different ways because I've always wanted to do more than just one thing hinting all the services that I do but um, like I want to be able to be making money when I'm on vacation when I'm spending time with my family there's so many things I want to do so I think like just narrowing them down and then like you said maybe opening my own salon one day um, I do live in the IE right now, but my studio is located in Orange County, so like maybe being able to work out of both cities would maybe be in the works for me, and then like maybe being able to sell stuff online one day, and then I've always liked social media, so like continue posting YouTube videos, reels, and stuff like that. Um, just kind of learning a little bit more just because Every day I am learning new things. There's so much to learn, so. Yeah, that's crazy. What's my favorite part of being an entrepreneur? Um, I would probably say, like, being able to control my business, my schedule, my services, um, my pricing. Because, like I said, when I was working at the spa, like, I didn't have no control over that. And I was just doing facials all day long. And I had to follow the protocols. And I feel like every client is different. And everybody's so anal about timing. So they'll all get on you about timing. Yeah, like, you need to finish at a certain time. The service is supposed to be an hour only. You can't go yeah. past an hour. Yeah. So, that and then... I mean, I applied at Ulta to do, like, brow waxing before, too, and, like, you basically, all they care about more is sales. It's so, all about the money. And I don't like that, because I'm not, I mean, I do like money, but I'm not, like, trying to shove everything in your face. I'm just trying to advise you 
on like what you should use and if you want to use it great if you don't that's cool like I'm not gonna be like I don't know I'm just not like super salesy which I guess you kind of have to be in the beauty industry at a certain point, but not, like... Too much work to, like, suffocating the clients. And for me, what's my favorite part? My scheduling. I could work when I want to. I could have my days off and stuff like that. Another thing is that's my favorite is having the relationship with my clients. I love having my relationship. I'm really close with my clients. Mm -hmm. I keep it professional, but at the end of the day, like... I kind of feel like they're my friends. Have you ever heard that quote? Like, your clients will become your friends. More than, like, your actual friend friends. will become your client, yeah. Yeah. I actually saw it earlier on Instagram. That's funny. <laughs> but I honestly feel like my clients are, like, my close friends. I know a lot about their life as well as they know not everything about my life, but certain stuff they know about my life. Yeah. Um, so it's really good to know... You to have that relationship with them. You basically catch up, like, every time yeah. you see each other. Yeah. We're like, so what's new? Uh, did you end up going to a place? Or, yeah. like, how was your vacation or stuff, yeah. you know? And I have a lot of older clients where, like, I, they've been with me since 218. I've been doing lashes since 218. So how long is that? It's been a while, yeah. We're in 2023. Like Four or five years? Yeah. Well, they've been with me since, like, 218. So I've known them for a long time, and they just came really close. So that's one thing I love. Okay. And just what made you choose the services you provide? Are you planning to add more services later on in the future? I ended up choosing lashes just because lashes is kind of like makeup. It kind of makes your makeup better and stand out. So that's the reason why I chose it. And I do want to add more. I want to add um, later on in the future. I want to do um, facials. I want to do waxing. All those other little small things. The only reason I'm not doing it now is just the little area I'm in. I'm not able to do any of that. Yeah. You know, facials needs quiet and peace. Yeah. And then privacy for waxing. And so I can't do that now, but that's later on in the future. And maybe do hair. I want to go back to hair. Okay. So That'd maybe do cool. like hair extensions at first and then Get do hair color. Get into it, yeah. Yeah, that's my plan. The services. Um, I always liked brows, like I said. So I do, I did really want to specialize into brows as well. And then when I went to school, I was like, oh, I'm going to be a waxer, like this and that. You know, and then we ended up doing facials, and I fell in love with doing facials. So, um, I stayed doing facials just because I really liked them. And then makeup. Makeup, I do makeup because, I mean, I know how to do it. I can help people out, so, like, why not? Um, we're actually taking a class next summer. Yeah, take it for well. makeup, so that'll be cool to like refresh and touch up. And if I'm adding services, um, not maybe not adding services because I do provide a lot of services. Um, but maybe like I'm thinking about taking a dermaplane class soon. Who's your role model? So like role model, I don't know if I really have role models. Um. Oh, you look up to? But I will shout out like some people in the industry that I do um, like watching their stuff. Um, Kristen Marie, I believe that's her name. Um, I watch a lot of her stuff. Um, she uses the same brand as me, so like a skincare line. And Savannah Boda, she's more of a higher end um, esthetician, so like her stuff is expensive actually i just started listening to a podcast as well called oh i think it's called the treatment room just move. yeah it's called the treatment room so the ones i like to watch and i um i keep up with them they're my role models it's the lana hustle she's very famous on tiktok julia is another it's um lash tech in the ie she does like a lot of vlogs she does a lot of like 
keeping up with her her little tricks and stuff like that so I like watching her um where I get my supplies from it's here in the IE it's called the heavenly lashes um she's another role model I like watching her work I like getting tips and tricks I take her classes I took her class not that long ago and it's a really good class looking up to them yeah because they're all successful I'm trying to be like that period and we are <laughs> one more that I just thought about when um she was mentioning some um I did recently start watching beauty with the twist so I, I like hers I sent you a clip I saw a clip of her come up on my Instagram and I love watching like beauty podcasts and stuff like that so I can listen to it when I'm working yeah. when I'm driving so because I always want to learn more so if you guys know like any good um, helpful resources let me know so we're just going to talk about like the struggles nobody talks about how to deal with fear and doubt advice marketing motivation how do you deal with the fear and doubt no how do i do deal with that um it's just like i don't have a choice either i fail and i don't know what i do with my life or i keep pushing and put my all into it because as i like to think about it like because sometimes i i have had doubts like am i supposed to be doing what i'm supposed to be doing and i truly believe that i've i've had science show me like yes i'm on the right path um, just keep going so I it's hard if you're just like in it for the money um, because there's not money coming in when you first start like there's not like you're not just gonna be a business owner and like oh my god I'm richness like no it takes a couple years the first five years I feel like are the bad years where you're not having income or constant income coming in for just you it's just Whatever you get, it's for the business. Um, that's how I see it. Yeah, I, I struggle a lot with that part, I would say, because, I mean, you just have to figure it out. You just have to figure it out because it's either that or you're stuck doing something that you're not really happy with. So I'd rather be struggling to get to where I want to be than not saying that I didn't go for it that you didn't try yeah because i will live the rest of my life um regretting. regretting that yeah and there will there will be haters there will be um people constantly watching you not supporting you i feel like family and your friends don't support <laughs> you as how you thought you were gonna get supported by them mm -hmm. well at least that's in my case yeah. all the family and all the um friends i thought were going to be supportive and stuff like that weren't the person the people that are supporting me and like are people that either i just met or like just random strangers you know or like closer friends like the ones i just met not that long ago yeah like, i would say for me like my family and my friends do support me here and there you know um but, like, I get what you're saying. I don't know how to explain my support, but, like... Like, there's a... For me, there's a handful of people I could say that are really close to me and have been close to me since the get-go. Which, that includes, like, some family members, some friends. But, like, the ones, like... You know how, like, growing up, you're like, oh, they're, these people are my friends and stuff like yeah. that? I do want to give a shout-out to my soccer girlies because, you know, I've played soccer for a long time and I met so many girls and there have been a handful of like my soccer girlies that have came to me and support me so I do want to like say thank you because I do appreciate them taxes oh don't Still. get me started with taxes <laughs> <laughs> taxes are a killer yeah they're so annoying um I don't even like doing my own taxes but now I have to do them for a business too so it's like it's really yeah in order to be in order to have clientele you need to be consistent in marketing i feel like that's the hard part that's where i struggle a lot because bro like there'll be times where i'm like i'm doing good you know but like 
sometimes I want to enjoy my life and like take a day or two off like maybe a weekend not having to stress about content because I'll try to post like once every other day on my feed at least but like on my stories I'll try to post a little bit more just so like people see me pop up or whatever but that is the hardest part is like coming up with constant content because you gotta stay relevant um and you know what sometimes I'm like like this kind of sucks like blah, blah blah whatever I do like creating content so like it's not that hard for me at the same time but it's like you gotta you gotta prep first of all mm -hmm. you gotta prep what are you, what are you gonna post what is is it whether it's a video graphic whatever you gotta figure out like while you're doing it you gotta be the cameraman woman I mean um you gotta be the one behind the camera at the same time you have to be the one editing you have to be the one posting you have to be the one captioning promoting it's it's a lot it's a lot because you know we have families i don't have kids yet so like that's a big help for me um but i do have a big family and everybody's constantly pulling me in every direction and you know i work i have another job besides this because i do have to maintain my lifestyle and i have a boyfriend i have friends i want to work out and it's like bro when when do you find all the time to do all that yeah you're busy <laughs> like that's why i've been kind of mia from youtube too because it's like everything like i get overwhelmed really easily when i start to think about all the stuff that i have to do and besides all that you still got to do the admin work mm -hmm. <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> like it's a lot like that just is. when i say it out like that and i'm like oh bro and then you still gotta you still gotta take care of yourself you still gotta clean your room you still gotta wash do personal stuff <sighs> it's just a lot sometimes you know and for me, for marketing, is a little hard. I am really bad at taking pictures before and after pictures. I remember when they're already walking out the door, and I'm like, oh, snap. Like, I need pictures. I need video. Um, and when I do take pictures, they come out ugly. They came out blurry. Mm -hmm. So I don't post them. So that's something I'm trying to work on um, for my marketing. Starting to do more reels. And... I can help you sometimes i'm like bro like it's not getting much engagement like the people even liking the content that i'm posting but just keep posting. and you know what <clears throat> i'm gonna say this and i'm gonna say it again keep posting because i had some clients come to me and they did tell me that you know they've been following me for a while and they've been watching my content and that they enjoy my content and I should keep posting my content because they never you like referring to me like you never know who's watching mm -hmm. and that motivated me to like keep going like okay so people do like the content I'm posting like people enjoy the reels and you know what I enjoy post posting reels and I enjoy making content as well how to stay motivated to continue when it starts to slow down. How do I stay motivated? Well, I stay motivated just by hanging out with, like, the people, like, the business owner friends I have. So, like, for example, Amanda, she's always pushing me as well as I'm pushing her. Um, just giving each other ideas because when it slows down, like, you have, I don't know, like, it gets me kind of sad. <laughs> it gets me kind of sad. I would say don't oh be God. sad because your bank account might not be okay, but don't be sad because, first of all, when she was saying that, it reminded me of this other lady that I watch, um, Lady Peng. Peng? I don't know if I'm saying it right. But I watch her lives every Wednesday now. Slow season is not, like, don't be sad, you know? Use that time to, like, motivate you to work in the other areas of your business when mm -hmm. it's slow don't be like oh my god i have no clients like let me just not do anything that is the time where you can come out with Great different content. promos content work on your admin work figure out like what could you improve on um just like trying to 
maybe even if the other things you want to work on on your business but you haven't gone into you know like okay so i like following people in the beauty industry because one um you make friends mm -hmm. even though like some people are your competition per se or whatever but i like bouncing off each other so like i have i have met people in different industries and i think it's so cool and like it's not always a competition if you're being like ugly about it like i feel like it there's a saying in spanish is el sol sale para todos the sun comes out for everybody even if you're doing the same service so say like if amanda does eyelashes not every client is for me so maybe like whatever's whatever isn't for me it could be for her you know like there's a lot of people in the world that could just go for either one of us you know yeah so i feel like i don't see people as competition i see them more as um i would say like motivation you know like mm -hmm. if you're up here i won't be like oh how did you get up there i want to be there with you yeah instead of being like oh no i don't like hater yeah like yeah. i'm not like that i'm like okay how did you get up there like can you give me any advice yeah. to get up there with you? <laughs> like, I think me and Vanessa met at a really good time because at that time, like, I was struggling because being in this industry by yourself is so hard. Like, so hard. Like, nobody understands. So I just really wanted a friend who I can talk to about my struggles, who understands me, who doesn't judge me or, like, look at me a certain way because of where I am or like anything like that you know and I wanted someone that I can talk to about business and bounce ideas off so like me like I just want to meet different people in the beauty industry because I want to pick their brains and I want to get to know people because one thing that I learned about in school is like the beauty industry is small and you know what let me tell you it in fact is very small because you know my teacher miss stephanie that i told you guys about so when she left she went to go get a new job right apparently we ended up working for the same spa company and it's crazy because i mean damn like i got the job because she vouched for me right away too like mm. like she was my teacher so like obviously i i knew how to do facials because she taught me like how to do facials yeah mm -hmm. even though it was like in school it's very basic like you have to learn everything else by yourself but like sh it's crazy i always thought about that that she told me the beauty industry is very small and the first thing you know is like She's my there. first esthetician job she was there that is crazy that is like that shit blew my mind <laughs> <laughs> i was like you weren't lying <laughs> is there anything you would like like to say or like any advice you would like to give Mm. just don't give up and just continue your dreams your goals no matter what obstacle gets in front of you because there's always going to be an obstacle yeah good or bad <clears throat> and find somebody who's your friend who you can talk to in the industry i know a lot of beauty girlies um some of them i haven't even met like wow like some of them i met off instagram it's just nice having people in different areas too because even if you're not in the area they are you can you know people in different areas that you can refer to as well so don't always be a hater because you never know where you're gonna end up mm -hmm. that's a good one i think we should um i was gonna end it there but i was watching kristen marie today at work and she said this quote i don't know where she got the quote from but i really liked it so i wrote it down <laughs> it's like even the trees lose their leaves you know mm. because they lose their leaves in the fall and then they get them back so they bloom mm -hmm. so kind of like how you said the sun rises for everybody mm -hmm. yeah. everybody's in their own lane so just like stay in your lane and don't try to like you're just gonna crash and burn oh my god that's such a good i love that okay guys thank you for watching if you stayed um i hope you all enjoyed this if you have any questions or anything you can comment down below or message us ask us any questions like who 
you may want me to talk to next. I don't know. I'm going to have to build my resume because, I mean, people might not want to sit down and talk to me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to start off with the girlies that I know in the industry. So we'll see how it goes. Thank you guys for watching. You want to say bye, bye? <laughs> She's all shy. <laughs> She's all tapping me like in the video. Okay, I won't look at you. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to say? I won't look at you. Well, thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm located in Ontario if you guys are ever interested in getting any service with me. And then I'm pretty sure she's going to leave my Instagram down below. So if you have any questions, you guys could always DM me.